Yo, what up, everybody? It's D.L. Stewart. Um, today I am doing the In December writing tag. I'm created by Megan Tennant from Cloud Hidden Chronicles. Um, if you don't know what In December is, it is to support uh, indie authors with you know getting other people to read their books and to review them um, for the month of December. Just kind of give a boost in you know reviews and such for them. Um, and she created a couple uh, In December tags. Um, there's a book tag and a writing tag. Um, today I'm doing the writing tag. So yeah, basically what it is, there's this bingo board that she created, different numbers, just like bingo. You pick the numbers out um, and you answer questions based off what number it is until you get a bingo, which is straight across, up and down, or at an angle somewhere. So yeah, let's uh, get started. I got a bow of all the numbers in here. Um, she says something about using a number picker, but I know I've seen some people that the numbers would pick the same number so let's let me i'll do this it'll kind of prevent me from having to deal with that um first i got nine i don't know if y'all can see that wow yeah okay um let's see here what's number nine oops shit all right question number nine ho 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 what's a line or scene that makes you or your reader laugh um for the battle for metagore um one of the lines um it comes from Capron. he's all over the place um and i would say it's probably his there is a scene with him and uh a lore um and she says she thought that he had left or something he's like yeah i decided to go um do something um real quick and she's like like what he's like um i had to go fiddle the backstress you know um and they and he continues but that line, you know, I had to go fiddle the backstress. This kind of, uh, I like it. Yeah, it makes me laugh. Next question. Nineteen. Uh, nineteen. Santa's beard. Who is your oldest character, and around how old are they? Well, um, the oldest actual character year wise would be Valak. Um, I can't remember exactly how old he is. I think he's like 3,000 and something years old, 4,000 and something, I don't know. Um, it's up there. He doesn't appear to be old. He's a djinn. Djinns can live up to, uh, about 5,000 years, so he's not, you know, that old. But I think he's in, like, the high end of the 3,000, low end of the 4,000, somewhere in there. Next question. Number seven. I got a little bingo board over here I'm kind of keeping, keeping track of. So, yeah. Yeah. Number seven. Feast. What's your favorite food-related scene? Um, the, my favorite food-related scene um, would be the opening chapter um, when they're at the festival and after they give their speeches. And then you see Valak kind of go and uh, distribute, or not Valak, Azrael go and uh, distribute different food to different places or whatever. And then you go back inside the courtyards um, while other people are eating and kind of chit-chatting. And there's a scene with Darius and Malar. Um, and it didn't end up being the way that I had originally wrote it. But originally while they was eating, um, it made Malar seem very cannibalistic. He was eating a slab of meat, and some of the description with the juices running down his face, and how he's just like, "Oh, I love the taste of meat," and blah blah blah. Um, that would probably be my favorite food-related scene. I kind of toned it down because I didn't want him to come across like a cannibal. Um, it was more intended that for the fact that he usually only eats, you know, um, crops, so fruits and vegetables and stuff, and at times he eats some meat. Um, and he mentions, you know, he likes to enjoy me, you know, that he didn't have to go and kill himself. Um, so he's used to living off the land more and doesn't enjoy a lot of meat, I guess. So, yeah. But that would be my favorite scene, just kind of that little conversation and stuff there. Number 14. Doo -doo -doo. Santa's coming to town. Is your protagonist naughty or nice? If you have multiple books or protagonists, you can do this for multiple. Um, I'll go ahead and do it for the six rulers. 
um, and the Battlefield Metagor. Um, for Sarah, I'll start with Cornelius. Cornelius would be nice. Um, he's very, you know, he's young, he's innocent. Um, so, yeah, he, he would be nice. And then you got Malar. Um, he would be nice. He's very um, family oriented and helping and humble. Um, then you have Capron. Uh, he, he would be naughty. Um, he's very perverted, um, center of attention, always uh, blowing smoke up everybody's ass and stuff, um, trying to be, like I said, center of attention. Um, so yeah, he'd be naughty. Gallic would be nice. He is very peaceful. He likes keeping the peace. He likes um, pleasing other people and stuff. You got Azrael. He would be naughty. Um, he's kind of two-faced. He might appear to be nice um, until you actually get to know him. And then you're like, oh, yeah, no, he's not. And then you got Darius, which would probably be naughty because he's very power-hungry and he has to have things his way. So I would have three naughties and three nice out of those six. Next question. Number 23. Traditions. What holidays or traditions exist in your story's world? If you have too many to list, what's your favorite? Um, I had to go and look it up. I couldn't remember how to pronounce it. It is only uh, available or only celebrated in Alburn. It's uh, Wallstraut de Rules with the rolling R. I can't roll my R's. But it translates to the Walk of Roses. And it is a... Uh, five-day celebration um, from a boy becoming in, a man or it was like that journey into manhood uh, and I really enjoy that the Iberians are based off of a lot of different Native American tribes and such and that celebration to me really encompasses that more native um, tribal type of uh, culture in a sense with you know, becoming a man and the process that they do it, um, scarifications and stuff like that. So, yeah, that would be my favorite holiday or trend trans tradition. So, yeah. Next question. 21. 21. Snow Angel. Which of your characters is most likely to make a snow angel and which is most likely to be wishing they were on a beach instead? Maybe Zuri. Um, Zuri is you know, more of a sweet uh, person, an angel. Um, I don't really, I don't picture her doing a snow angel, but I mean, maybe if the occasion you know, called for it or something, maybe. Um, and the one that would want to be on a beach um, would be like, uh, Darius, Daggerus, um, you know, any of the demon um, characters just because they can't live in cold environments um, for very long. So, yeah. Next question. Question number 20. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, what's going on? Gingerbread houses. Who is your handiest and craftiest character? Um, I would say probably Malar. Um, he's used to working the land um, and building things like that. He like he's very good at farming. He's very good at doing construction. He's very good, you know, working with his hands um, and physical labor and stuff. Next question: Twenty-five. Naughty tonight. Which character was on the naughty list, but Santa liked them and talked them off and took them off? Um. I don't know. I don't really have a character that goes from being bad to good, in my sense. I would say maybe Solaris. Um, he's not really bad, bad. Um, he, he He's involved with some bad things, I guess. Uh, but he's the kind that will do stuff, even if it's bad, um, just to obey you know the person that told him to do it or whatever. But he feels bad about it, and then he kind of regrets it, in a sense, or is like, ah, I, I should have done that. You know, he knows that it was bad, and he feels bad about it, but he, you know, did it anyways, or whatever. So, I would say Solaris. Next question. Three. Wait. 
draw another number. <laughs> Three, milk and cookies. What's your favorite rider snack? Bonus if it's milk and cookies. Nope. Um, for actual snack, I don't really eat that much um, while I'm riding. Now then I might have some chips or something. Um, but most of the time I don't. Um, I usually keep a glass of water or a glass of tea um, nearby for me to drink on or whatever. But that would be about it. Next question. Beep, beep. Question 11. Number 11. Eggnog. What's your favorite riderly drink? And most importantly, do you ever spike it with alcohol? Well, like I just said, um, usually I just write with water or tea or something. Um, and no, I never spike it with alcohol. I don't drink alcohol ever. I never have. Never intend to do it. So, no, just plain water or some sweet tea or something. Now that I might have a Kool-Aid, I don't know. Next question. 24. 24, Santa's workshop. Show us your writing space or a picture of your writing space. Bonus points if it's a disaster zone. Well, this is my bedroom, so I will go ahead and show it to y'all. This is my desk. That's my little bingo board thingy that I made up right now. Bowl of thingies. Some papers. Questions. My daughter's notebook. My knee brace. Some other notebooks. Printer. Stack of random papers and stuff for work and other things. My laptop. Pen holder. A couple of books um, right there. My books on top right there. Um, some little knickknack things that my kids got me. <laughs> my daughter got me the unicorn. She likes unicorns. She thought I would too. But well. But I got dragons, some food dogs, and the globe, and some books over there. Um, that's about all the books I can keep uh, on my desk. So yeah. Oh, oh crap. Let's see if I can get this repositioned again. Yeah, good enough. So yeah, that was my workspace when I do it in here. Like my writing streams and stuff. Um, otherwise, I usually just sit on the couch with my laptop in my lap because that's what a laptop's for. Or I might sit at the table, depending, you know, what I want to do. Next question, number eight. Do do do. I'm going to get it at some point. <laughs> hey, Santa baby, which of your characters could romance presents out of Santa? I would probably say Catherine would try. Um, like I say, he's very perverted. He's a flirt. Um, he likes being the center of attention and blowing smoke up everybody's ass. And I'm sure he would try to do that to Santa. You know, he doesn't care if it's a boy or girl, whatever. Um, he, he's... I don't picture him as being bisexual or anything like that. It's just, he just, he's a flirt, you know. Whether anything comes of it or not, he doesn't really care. He just, that's his personality. Um, so, yeah. I would say that that could possibly be him. I think my camera is sitting at an angle a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. It took me forever to get it set up the first time. This is how I wanted it. Oh, be good. Number two. Boom, 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 boom. Number two. Rudolph, do you have any furry riding companions? Bonus points for showing them on film. Um, I do at times. I have three cats. Uh, they <sighs> have three kids. Um, so they are very skittish. Um, they will sleep with them. I don't know why, but the kids like pester them, pull their tails, smack them, push them, pull hair, whatever. I think yesterday while I was doing my riding sprint, my wife told me that both my girls were like on both sides of the cat stand, shaking it, trying to knock the cat off of it. Um, so they're always picking on them, but the cats usually sleep with them still. Um, but because the kids are so mean to them, they are very skittish around people that are awake. Now and then, if I'm just sitting on the couch or whatever, um, they'll come up, uh, maybe lay at my feet or lay on like one of the cushions on the back. 
but that's about it. Um, I'm not about to go hunt them down. They're probably underneath the bed somewhere. But here's a picture of them. So, yeah. Question number one. Nightmare Before Christmas. What's a... What's a writing or book release mistake that still haunts you? Um, writing or a book release? Uh, I don't know. I don't really have anything that really you know, haunts me or I wish I did different. Uh, I'm sure there are things I could have done different, but nothing that's like, oh man, I wish I didn't do that. It's just like, oh, all right, whatever. Um, I would probably say all the problems I had with Amazon and KDP whenever I released my book. Um, I had uploaded it. I don't really see it as a mistake or anything. It's just the hassle and stuff. But I uploaded the book and stuff for it to be released. Like March, maybe? April, or Yeah, February or March uh, this year. And the book wasn't released until May um, 21st. So I uploaded it in plenty of time. They did their little things, like, yeah, it's fine, whatever. Um, and then when it came to be released, neither of them, the ebook or the paperback, was released on the day it was supposed to. The ebook came out, I think, two days later or something like that, a couple days later. Um, and then the paperback didn't come out for like several weeks later. Um, it finally went through, um, which I don't know why. Um, I know I've heard some people say they go ahead and tell it to go live a few days early so it kind of goes through but even then the paperback still took a couple weeks um, I don't know why that was the case but yeah it was a big pain in the ass and stuff so oh well next question 17 oh my god <laughs> I think I'm gonna get as many as you can possibly get without getting a bingo 17 the Grinch Who Stole Christmas. Which of your characters is most likely to steal cookies and or gifts from Santa? Oh. Who would steal it? I would say Azure might. Um, he might steal it from him just to give it to somebody else. Just so that they would give him something to give to Santa, maybe. I don't know. Um, he's kind of shady and two-faced and kind of, you know, works both sides and does something just to get something from somebody else, that poor deal. So I could see him doing it. Um, anybody else? I don't know. Maybe not. But I'm gonna stick with the Azrael. Number 16. Oh, shit. What question was that? It was 17? Hell yeah. Never mind. I got bingo. I just noticed that. I'll go ahead and answer number 16 since I pulled it anyways. But yeah, uh, I just now noticed I had a bingo. Uh, but 16, <clears throat> bonus question. Uh, cutting down Christmas trees. Do you edit your manuscript in digital format or print it out? Um, I myself usually edit it in uh, digital. Um, let's see here. Is it in here? Oh, shit. I think it is. Yep. Oh, come on. Oh. I got filing cabinet down here. I didn't show you all while ago. But, yeah. So I keep all my tech stuff and things and other stuff. But uh, I myself edited it in digital as well as I printed the first draft off whatever um however many papers this is I have no fucking clue but had uh printed it off for my wife to look at it um and to kind of read it that way because she likes it more physical form um which I usually like a lot of my reading material in physical form rather than ebooks um just for the fact that I like to hold it I guess I don't know but she's like that so I gave her this um and that way she could uh make any suggestions or changes she wanted on there without actually tampering with the actual document I was already working on since I had already made some changes on it before, you know, she got done with this. I was already working on the third draft to make these changes when she was still reviewing the first draft. Um, so 
I did that. Um, so I forgot what the question was. Oh yeah, <laughs> I do digital myself. Uh, my wife does uh, physical. She can tell she highlights different things, different colors for different purposes. There's uh, orange and green. And I think in some spots there's like a pinkish red color she used. Yeah. And basically different ones. Um, I forgot what these were for. Um, she had a system with it. I remember the red or the uh, pinkish colored one or whatever was to like remove something. I think the orange was like difficult or it should be like rewarded or something like that. And then the green was more of a comment like, you know, why did you do this? What is this referring to? I don't think you mentioned this. I think this is wrong. I think they had this color vase instead of this or whatever. Um, so I think that's what the green was and the yellow orange was more actual, you know, this reads weird, you know, this should be reworded. This is incorrect or whatever more actual grammatically errors, grammatical errors or whatever. And then the pink was just a, yeah, you misspell this word or take this word out or whatever. Um, yeah, thank you all for watching. That was my in December writing tag. Like I said, it's created by Megan Tennant at Cloud Kitten Chronicles. Her link's down below. Um, down below, can't see over here, but yeah, over here. Um, it's down there. So you can go check out her channel or whatever and watch her video of it, as well as her video kind of explaining what in December is in more detail. As well, she has a writing or an in December book tag, which I'm not sure yet if I'm going to do. I might. I don't know. I haven't even watched hers yet. I just know she uploaded it um, yesterday or today or something. I don't know. I just know I noticed she had uploaded it, so I'm going to watch it at some point. But anyways, that's down there. If you are participating in December, right here are all the uh, squares you can fill up with my book if you decide to read it. Um, and I am even going to be generous enough during the month of December if you want to go buy the book, you know, all the links are down below. If you want paperback, ebook, whatever, all that stuff is linked down below. If you are wanting to do in December and you don't have the money to purchase um, a copy of the book, I will send you a free ebook copy of it, um, either in PDF form or in a Mobi form. I have both files, so I can send that to you and you can read it um, and review it or whatever. And then, you know, I'm not out anything trying to order a book and send it to you for free or anything. And yeah. But that way you can do it and not be out the money. But right there are all the uh, links you can get or the squares you can get for uh, in December on that bingo board thing. So, yeah. I guess that's about it. All my links are down below. Um, like I said, all the books links are down below. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Click the like button. Ring that bell so you know whenever I do finally upload videos, which I know I've been kind of slacking here lately. And um, I know also... The schedule I put up on my newsletter has been off for the past couple months, so I apologize. I'm going to try to do better with that next year. Um, I think it's mostly just because of Nano. Last month was just got all crazy, and then this month um, with you know Nano being last month and you know this being December and everything else has just been yeah. But anyways, um, all that stuff is linked below. I got a newsletter you can go sign up for and stuff on my website. Uh, also, there's a link or a list of uh, other author tubers down below if you want to go check out their channels. Um, some of them do writing streams or whatever, which there's a schedule at the very bottom in the description um, and tells you whose channels and what times if you want to go and participate in that. So, yeah, there's a lot of little goodies down there, I guess, you can go uh, sign up for. As well as, I have been doing, I guess, the unofficial uh, Nano in December. Um, with Aphrodite Lee and Deal Tillery and a bunch of other author tubers um, who didn't really have much time to do Nano last month. They decided to do it this month instead. And my goal is to finish the first draft of Sovereign Duties, which I am about done. Um, I think I got maybe four chapters, four and a half, something like that left to write. Um, so hopefully by the end of the month, I will have that complete. And then by January, I will be looking for alpha readers. If you would like to be an alpha reader for Sovereign Duties, which is book two of my Metagore series, that link is also down below. You can go sign up for it. Um, 
like I said, it won't be until like probably January or February, depending if I do finish on um, the first draft, um, which I intend to do. It's, it shouldn't take that much longer. Um, but I might go back and make a few little changes before I send it out, just kind of polish it a little bit. Um, I know I got some words that's kind of highlighted that I was like, this word works, but I'd rather use a different word. I'm just going to think of it at that time. So I might go through and change all that before I send it out. I'm not sure. But either way, um, you can go ahead and sign up for, um, sign up to be an, uh, a little bit of, can't talk today. You can go ahead and sign up to be an alpha reader. And uh, yeah, I'll let y'all know whenever that time comes that I'm actually ready to send it out. And if you've already signed up, then you ain't got to do it again. I already got your information. I can be like, hey, thank you for signing up. Here's a copy, um, basically. So yeah, I guess that's about it. Some rambling, like always. And my son's been quiet in there, so I think I'm gonna have to go check up on him. Yeah. Anyways, peace out, Yeah, Everybody love everybody.